Hi there, I'm David Monk. I have a blog called Stargazing, and I'm also a contributor to the Huffington Post. And I am here with David Thorpe, who just directed a movie called Do I Sound Gay? Um, it was a movie that, out of all the entries in the festival, David, I said, this is interesting, because it was gay programming, for one thing. But also, I was very, um, very, very taken with the idea, like in the moment that I read the name of the film, like bells went off in my head, like lifelong bells. I was like, the sound of my voice and, mm. and what a gay voice is and what it has meant to me. And I've thought about it in different fragmented ways, but seeing your film really brought um, a lot of it into focus and brought up a lot for me. Uh, I was curious what, what the impetus was and you know, what brought you to the idea of making this film? Well, I'm thrilled that, the, that you were interested in the film and that it paid off for you. To, to a, a great degree. Um, for me, you know, as I say in the film, I, I got dumped and it, you know, caused a little bit of a midlife crisis for me. Right. Uh, I think that's really typical gay or not gay that when you break up with someone and you're single, you kind of ask what's wrong with me. So that was right. the initial impulse. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, I did kind of re uh, connect with this self consciousness about sounding gay at that time. But what was different versus when I was a kid was I started this project. And when I started interviewing people, I found very quickly that this was a subject mm -hmm. that a lot of people had thought about and nobody had really talked about. And just like you right. had bells go off when you heard about the subject, that kept happening when I would meet people. And it really yeah. was kind of the fuel that kept me going. And I think you did a really, really good job in exploring like the different aspects of identity and, and what the voice means, what we sound like. But the more I watch it, the more I realize that it's so much more than that. Um, because it, it's sort of, uh, it's even broader than just being gay or being perceived as gay. You have a gentleman at the beginning of the film who is gay, se he seems to be gay, but is in fact heterosexual. Um, sexuality in itself is, is such a uh, incredibly dense and... <laughs> A uh, complex subject, but what what would you say uh, is a gay voice? What did you learn? Well, I would say there's no such thing as a gay voice, uh, but I would say there is a stereotypically gay voice. Okay. Uh, because not every gay man talks the same way, mm. not every straight man talks the same way, but certainly we have cultural stereotypes of what a gay voice is, and, and that's a gay right. voice is a, a man who sounds effeminate. Right. A stereotypically gay voice. Uh, right. And one of the linguists that I interviewed in the film constantly correcting me and saying, a gay sounding voice, because there's no such thing as a gay voice, but there are voices that trigger you to think this person is gay. Right. As you said, in the film, there's a straight guy who you know, most people would say sounds gay. Right. Um, so really, your voice really has nothing to do with your sexual orientation exclusively. Right. It, it, we think has more to do with kind of your gender identity. Yet at the beginning of the film, you approached uh, many people in different places and said, what did you say, am I gay or do I sound gay? Do I sound gay, yeah. And uh, there was some consistency in their responses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so is that just based on stereotypes? I mean, it seems so endemic and so ingrained, not just in our culture, but mm -hmm. you were also in other places, mm -hmm. right? Other mm -hmm. parts of the world. So you and I sound gay wherever we go, I guess. Uh -huh. Well, there were a few people in the film who said that I didn't sound gay. Um, they go by pretty quickly. The deaf woman. <laughs> yes. For She's one. always good for that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my fa most of my family, they don't think I sound gay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a handful of others. So it seems like there's consensus, but, un you know, one person who's in disagreement with that consensus kind of breaks that, uh, that idea that I'm always sounding gay. But, you know, we do code switch. Mm -hmm. So That was something I was going to bring up because yeah. I'd never heard it called that, mm -hmm. although I'm very familiar with the idea of doing it. Yeah, code switching is a, a linguistic term that uh, actually has recently been popularized a bit more around race. I think um, it's, it's, I really it's maybe better known in the African-American community as uh, sometimes you sound black with your, you know, your black friends, but when you are with a group of white people, maybe you're, you sound less Which baffles black. some people. Yeah, Oprah is a great example of somebody who's been made fun of for code switching. Right. Uh, and Obama has been made fun of for code switching. 
uh, because sometimes, you know, he gets into kind of a rousing, more African Folksy. Yeah, right. African American minister voice. Sometimes he's more corporate. And we all do that. And I think the question for me in the film was, well, you know, what is the real me? Well, you know, that to my point that I was uh, going to bring up, which is authenticity. Mm -hmm. What is real? Like, for example, I, I, I try not to hear myself, but if I need to get on the phone and create a certain kind of response, mm -hmm. I guess I speak in a certain way because I'll hear my best friend say, what is that, your business voice? Right. Um, and, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's code switching. It's like me affecting. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious what you learned about authenticity and voices. Well, it's a great question. I mean, I, honestly, if I really knew what authenticity was, I feel right. like I would, I would be a rich man. Right. Uh, but, you know, I think for me, what I learned over the course of making the film was to just to speak, not to be concerned about whether or not I was being authentic or not. And I think for me, like, the big hurdle was uh, I was afraid of speaking because I was afraid of sounding gay and being identified as being gay and then being harassed. And that d dates back to high school or sure. elementary school, and it's not... When did your bullying start in... Middle school, yeah. Third yeah. Grade. yeah, and it's not rational, you know. Right. Um, uh, but once you're stigmatized like that, it's hard to let go of, and I think... Really? Yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. And Dan Savage says in the film, you know, that uh, think you're, for a lot of gay men of... Com being comfortable with your voice is kind of the last vestige of internalized homophobia. And I think that's because a voice is so much a part of who you are. You know, you, you can take on that, that rainbow pin, you can take it off, and you can take off your, your suspenders and maybe be less gay, or you could put them on and seem more gay. But with your voice, most people don't feel like they have that kind of control. Right. Um, and so it's more of a point of vulnerability. What's the end game? to make you sound more what? Right, I mean, that's the question. That's the question. And Did you get that? <laughs> that is the question. question. Uh, you know, but I, I, I don't want to give away the ending for people. Okay. Um, but let's just say that I think I started out with this fantasy of what it would be like to not sound gay, and I, I you know, find out something different. I empathize with that because I, um, I feel like Childhood was so traumatic, and then my big triumph in my 20s and 30s was being able to stop hearing myself, mm -hmm. uh, to let go of hearing mm -hmm. that voice. And then I was um, getting frustrated that my agent was only sending me up for gay parts, which there weren't any. Um, and I went to see someone, and I said, you know, a voiceover teacher, try and work on figuring out, you know, how to make me sound less gay, and I thought, I thought I got over this 30 years ago, and in hearing my voice again recorded, brought back a lot of that pain. Mm -hmm. um, people, at, people in media, actors, mm -hmm. people on the radio, people on television are really particularly sensitive to right. the issue. And frankly, so are a lot of people in the corporate world. Right. Um, there's a, People in the corporate world still uh, feel a lot of pressure to not stand out. And there was a great study of like 3,000 LGBT, you know, corporate people, and 83% of them said that they hide some aspect of their sexual orientation at work. So they don't say, you know, uh, yeah, my my boyfriend is waiting for me right. downstairs, or they don't say, you know, I'm going to Bear Weekend. Um, and right. so there's they leave things out. Yeah. So I think uh, our our voices play a big role in our daily lives, and if your job you know, is, has some relationship to your voice, then um, it can, you know, it can be a little difficult to negotiate. Um, I was thinking a lot about uh, the internalized homophobia, what we carry ourselves, and the idea that, um, like, one thing that's very endemic in gay culture is you can be gay, just don't act it. So you're looking, back in the days of the Village Voice and the personals, it would be like uh, uh, straight acting, the whole straight acting thing. And I... I, I mean, do you think that's ever going to go away, or is it just so... That's a great question. I mean, you certainly see that today on Grindr or, you know, uh, other apps where it's like, you know, looking for mask or whatever. Right. Um, and masculine. It, yeah. Masculine. Masculine. And there, there's some little meme on the internet about we're all masculine until Britney comes on. Um, so... <laughs> it's funny. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I don't know if it'll ever go away. I mean, there's, uh, you know, sexism, fear of fear of effeminacy is such a widespread part of our culture. But, you know, I don't know. Kids today seem to really be pushing a lot of boundaries. And right. um, who knows? Maybe, maybe things will change. Um, Dan Savage commented in the film, you have amazing, amazing people involved uh, in the Thank film. You. I really enjoyed the panel. Yeah. Basically, Margaret Cho <laughs> and... Uh, who'd I leave out um, of David Sedaris, David Sedaris. Uh, Don Lemon, Dan Savage, George Takei, yeah, Tim Gunn. It was, uh, yeah, Tim Gunn's very funny. The quote that I loved of him, he was something about enunciating. We enunciate. And to and that, that I say mwah. Right? He says, if that's gay, mwah. Right, so there's that. <laughs> yeah, um, he's not ashamed of himself. Good, well, that's inspiring. Dan Savage commented on the relationship between uh, sexism. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought that was very interesting too. Mm -hmm. You know that there's sort of a hierarchy between um, what you know being a woman is in some way right. um, lower. Yeah. No. A lot of women have said to me that they are glad that that is in the film. That mm -hmm. Dan Savage says very clearly uh, that our fear of effeminacy, whether we're straight or gay or, or another orientation, comes from misogyny. That right. to be a woman is to be weak. Right. And nobody wants to appear to be weak. Right. Um, it's interesting. I was also, uh, another thing that jumped out at me was the porn stuff. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of porn in the movie. That jumps out at a lot of people. Yeah. But I realized, you know, the porn is hyper masculine. Of course, there's a, a part of gay culture that is hyper masculine. Um, what, what are we saying about ourselves uh, by depicting ourselves in, in this way? Um, I, 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 what do you think? Well, I don't it's know. a great question. I mean, I don't want to stigmatize anybody's fetish. Um, and I, I think you know, sex is a great place for fantasy and role playing. So I think there's, that's a lot of what's maybe happening is mm -hmm. that you know, we're getting to act out our, our fantasies of, right. of masculinity and femininity sometimes. How long did it take you to make the film? It took me about three and a half years. Really? Uh, um, which is actually for a documentary pretty zippy. Right, zippy. Zippy. <laughs> you, one thing I thought was interesting was that your, um, you actually, your voice got gayer, gayer. Uh -huh. I, I, I can't even talk like this, but in high school, mm. your friends from that period were commenting mm -hmm. that you had a more neutral. Right. How did you do that? <laughs> did mean, you try and fail? No, it just was no. never even an option. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's a funny thing. Everyone's experience is different. And I, I think. covering. I, I think at that time you'd call it passing. Passing, you know, right. Mean, it's like imitation. I wasn't just downplaying who right. I was. Like, I was hiding in the closet. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I had an older brother. I think that I just imitated him. Um, but yeah, you know, I really. I th was a pretty effeminate kid and then started to get, you know, made fun of for it. And, right. And. Basically, you know, I think I was a lot less extroverted because I thought, you know, just the less I said, the fewer chances I would have. So you stopped speaking to some extent. You got yeah. smaller. Yeah, I did get smaller. And, mm. you know, then when I came out, I could sort of get bigger. Um, and so a lot of my high school friends were like, who are you? Right. You know, and I've, I've had people, young people tell me that today. So know. having made this film and gone on this sort of arc, I don't like using the word journey. It's just... <laughs> um, are you are you somewhere in the middle now? Like, I mean, where's your has your voice settled? I th I think that's a great word for it. I think it has You're settled. settling down. Yeah, I mean, I think you know when I am in a situation like this where I'm comfortable or with my friends, my voice feels w that it is where it should be. And I think the most important thing is that I don't worry about what people think about my voice. That's right. that's really the big difference. It's you know, um, I think. It would be hard for anyone else to hear a difference, but but I I feel like my voice is integrated now into who I am. It's right. part of who I am, and it took making the film for me to feel that way. And you know, it's a it's a, it's a symbol of how we all have things that we don't like about ourselves. And, right. And what do you do? How do you address that? And uh, mm -hmm. it's called "Do I Sound Gay?" Because you know, the point of the film is that we should ask ourselves the the tough questions. Um, that are hovering, you know, out there. You know, I've, I've always liked Louis, Louis, Louis C.K., but mm. in this film, I, I was I was disturbed. I I still find myself uh, a little bit on the fence about Louis C.K. I yeah. mean, I, I don't 
find him terribly funny in general. Right. But I, I am influenced by the piece of his routine that is in the is in my movie. Uh, because yeah, um, it, it, yeah, well, it's also the I don't if you, it's actually the opening monologue, right? And so it's really disturbing to turn on that play, press play on that DVD and get like this wave of homophobic humor. And, and of course, I think he would say, "Hey, wait a minute, I'm not homophobic." But for me, that it's really it's hard to read that that monologue as anything else. And that's kind of how he got huge. Really? And, and well, that, you know, there was his HBO special. Yeah, that wasn't on my radar at that point. Yeah, but. and it's a it's a piece that people love. You still can get it. So listen, you know, I think he's done a lot for LGBT culture since then. You know, I think he's I think he's even won a Glad Award. You should fact check that. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's been a supporter of the gay community, and it. Uh, uh, so I don't, I don't you know that routine is not the whole story with him. Um, but yeah, it still bugs me. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, well, listen, I I, I just, held a grudge. I am not. A, <laughs> I've never yeah. held a grudge in my life. Uh, I, I really, as you can see, it's like I, we just got out of the film just a few minutes ago, and it was like watching my life pass real fast, and trying to grab elements of mm -hmm. it, and because I think that this is a very relatable subject. Mm -hmm. Um, to gay men. Well, come back to me when you've had a chance to process it. When my voice settles. <laughs> yes. Well, maybe after the film, you'll you'll be on your way. I wish you so much luck with it. Thank I you really so much. Enjoyed it. My Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you.